day. It seems like a lot of chaos with tags and sheets and numbers and computers. Basically what we've done is we have taken these samples right here. These are ones we just filled with ear tissue and these are other ones that are not used. But we've taken a DNA sample of each one of these heifers, uh, 411 of them, and then we have ranked those heifers here in this line on Identity mater Maternal Index. So we have some other indexes we've created, but on these heifers we've decided to sort them on this index that we've made. Um, and so we're taking the calf tag, the previous tag number that the animal had, and then we're putting it a uh, cow tag. This is kind of a preparation for breeding season. So we're putting one of these yellow tags in their ear and to replace their calf tag. And what we're doing with those is we're ranking them from one to 400 based on where they ranked on this maternal index. It's, it's a lot of work to do that right now, but kind of throughout their life now, we will know where they ranked on their DNA score. Some of that might be a little bit of an experiment. Some of it might be us watching Igenity or Neogen and saying, hey, do we, do we believe your numbers or not? If, you, if your stability number and your maternal index is really this good, are we gonna see that kind of improvement in our cow herd? Now we believe that we are, so we're gonna sort these heifers based on this ranking, on this maternal index, and we're gonna cull the bottom 150 from the program and, and keep the top 300 or so that based on their DNA test, their traits. And so on these traits, there's a whole bunch of them here. We have birth weight, calving ease direct, calving ease maternal, docility, have her pregnancy rate, mill, stability. The stability combines several maternal traits. But basically the st stability is one we really key on because it's telling us which heifers that we're gonna select right now should have be pregnant their first year and have a calf every year for six years and stay in the cow herd. And all these are, are ranked from one to 10, 10 being the highest or the best trait. And so you can see then we, then we move from like these maternal traits over into more carcass merit or terminal traits or production traits. Traits. So we got weaning weight, average daily gain, yearling weight, scrotal circumference. Scrotal circumference on a heifer is again important because the higher the scrotal circumference, the higher it indicates fertility. If that is, is really low, then it would indicate a heifer that's not very fertile or not going to be very fertile. So in, in the old days, when I used to work at other ranches and we were raising bulls and heifers, and, and when the vet comes to trick test these bulls, he's going to measure their scrotum. He's going to tell them, oh, it's a 38, it's a 39, it's to 40 and, and we'll be able to compare the actual measurement to what the DNA test says the scrotal circumference is going to be on the plus or the minus side. Anyway through the science of all this genetics though in heifers we generally measure pelvic area and so they have a little clamp that goes inside the pelvic and it opens and it tells you oh it's 10 centimeters or 9 centimeters or whatever and a lot of, a lot of ranches used to do that five or ten years ago where they would measure the, the pel pelvic area to decide whether oh she's got a tiny pelvis I don't want to be pulling calves out of her we're gonna sell her well right now now instead of doing all that work of measuring all the pelvises we're just blending that into here and there's strong correlations between scrotal circumference in bulls what her male offspring will have for scrotal circumference but also fertility in heifers and so generally the the larger the scrotal circumference in bulls the more fertile his daughters are going to be as far as breeding up the, the first year having a larger pelvic diameter and things anyway there's there's correlations between it and so even though it's a male related trait and we would only be kind of looking at well is that just applied to her male offspring no it's it's also an indicator related to fertility feed intake is is kind of an efficiency related one and that one lower is better and birth weight lower is better um, they, they rank them from one to ten the same but we just know in our head and we built the indexes in such a way that that basically that shows less feed she can do more with less feed and then we have these carcass traits tenderless marbling ribeye fat thickness and hot carcass weight basically her offspring should have a very high hot, hot carcass weight and very high yearling weight so a lot of growth there the ability number is pretty good but basically we're taking all those numbers we're creating an index and then we're gonna rank them based on that index uh, um, the, these that we're not keeping that rank below 5.5, um, if you look across here, there's a lot of fours and twos and threes. There, there's things in these cattle that would, would make them um, not necessarily something that, that we want to keep. And so on the average, again, whoever, you have to be a great statistics major to understand all this, but on, on, on these, these averages that we're building here, you know, they just rank lower overall. You get down down into these fours. I mean, there's just 
they're not impressive all the way across. They're just below average. And now we're able to take those out of the herd and, and cull them right now instead of, as we go along, having them in our cow herd for the next four, five, six years. Now there's some things out here like tenderness that, man, that one's got a 10 on tenderness, but what else, what else does it have to go with it? It shows stability is really low. So our chances that that cow will stay in the cow herd for the next six years and have a calf every year is very low. So we're gonna take her out right now and not worry about that. So basically between these different indexes, the traits are weighted differently. So if you're looking at her maternal index, it's a 5.3, but her terminal index is a 6.25 which means over here in this um, carcass data, she did okay. She's, she's above the fives, you know, she's sevens, eights, she's okay. But over here where we're, we're talking about making a mama cow, uh, she, she's not as good. Again, I talked about scrotal circumference being an indicator of fertility, she's a three, you know? And so those, those are things that we're, we're looking for that you don't necessarily see calving ease, maternal uh, and direct. This number should be a lot higher. This four is not necessarily a concern. So that's terminal. This is the predict production index, which is basically a blend between the terminal and the maternal. These Canon blends, these are custom ones that I worked with the guy on, where yeah, basically we're adding values to these numbers to help us sort. Basically, if we did the Canon blend, or balanced, the balanced, I'm gonna use that sort on the bulls we're gonna keep, and it adds a lot more of this into the mix. So you can see if you're adding more carcass merit to the mix, she scores a little higher. Our Canon maternal, she even scored worse. We must've put some values over here on something a little harsher than what maternal did. And so these, these indexes, all these five lines, they just drive you nuts. They just <laughs> trying to figure out how to sort the cattle, where to put the values. These numbers over here, they're fixed, they're hard. That's, that's the actual DNA test. And then this is what we're creating, manipulating the data to get the answers we want out of these numbers. Our thought in doing this is that we can move our cow herd quality forward faster, right? In the past, I just select the heifers by sorting them in an alley. I just go out there and, hey, that one looks good to me and that one doesn't look good to me. And I just basically sort them in the alley. What I'm finding looking at all these numbers is that a lot of those heifers that look really good to me by eye are good in their terminal indexes, but not good in their maternal indexes. And so we're kind of trying to balance that up a little more where we have a little more fertility in the cow herd, a little more stability in the cow herd, making sure our heifers breed upright, other indexes and stuff that aren't really listed here, but are play into that stability number, have to do a pelvic size and stuff. All that noise behind you is more cattle coming into the chute. They just went and grabbed us another pen. The other thing that we're doing today is we're giving them two vaccinations. This Boba Shield Gold vaccination also has Lepto and Vibrio in there, which are breeding diseases that cause abortion. So where these are heifers and we're getting ready to prepare them for the breeding season, um, we're, we're giving them that Vibri Vibrio Lepto. And then the other vaccines in there are for respiratory. So anything that causes basically pneumonia in cattle is contained in this one. This one is an eight-way vaccine that they've had twice in their life already, once at branding and once at weaning. But we find out if we don't booster it as yearlings, which they're, they're just coming yearlings now, then sometimes we lose some. Sometimes they have a, a little weakness to some of these clostridial diseases and, and, and they'll die on us. And so we, we just do that booster as, as a yearling. So this whole process today, everything we're going through, sorting these cattle, ranking these cattle, is in preparation for breeding. And again, the sorting, the ranking, and the renumbering is all focused on quality improvement. Trying to take, instead of just phenotypically looking at those, cattle and sorting for replacements based on that. Now we're adding the geno profile to it where now we're looking at them visually, but we're also just looking at them uh, genotypically what their DNA tells us their potential is for them to do. On commercial ranches like what we're doing is not very common, but on purebred ranches it is. All the EPDs, anything today that you get on purebred cattle are, is genetically enhanced or they might take the EPD, the expected progeny difference based on the, the database they have on the sires and the, the dam side of all those, but they're now enhancing them with genetic merit. And so a little more accurate than we've been in, in the past times.